Okay, hiking off this old mining road towards an abandoned mine. Two tunnels are indicated on the topographic map. I'm not sure what's going to be there, but we're going to check it out. Uh, right here, you see some uh, cactus with a... Right there in the front, there's a single solitary, what's left over of a bloom. A cactus bloom from earlier this spring, so... Yeah, uh, I was down on the desert floor earlier today in Death Valley, where it's a lot hotter. It's about 100 degrees down there. Uh, up here in the, in the mountains, the higher elevations, usually about a 20 degree difference. It's about 85 degrees here, so that's why the Native Americans in the summertime, they would uh, head to the higher elevations up in the mountains where it was cooler. And then come wintertime, they would go back down to Death Valley into the valley proper where it was warmer. So big, uh, big temperature difference between the elevations. So I kind of wandered around this abandoned mine site, kind of came down into this little ravine where it's kind of disturbed. And I found this, uh, what looks to be a prospect entrance right here. Um, there's a lot of cans in there, metal cans of all shapes and sizes. So I'm not sure if the miners were using this as their can dump or if they actually lived in here and, uh, you know, threw the cans inside here when they were done using them. But I noticed right outside the entrance here, this is pretty modern. Uh, it's a piece of a Coca-Cola bottle, but right next to it was this bottle, which has a very unusual shape. See that? It's kind of like a half a circle. And the bottom's got like a flower petal design. And uh, it's kind of a uh, thick glass. Too bad the top's broken, but uh, it's flat on this side. See that? It's, a, it's got a flat. It's flat. So that's kind of a cool bottle. We were just laying out here outside the entrance. Anyway, I'm going to take a peek in here. This probably doesn't go anywhere, but we'll see. Okay, uh, right inside the entrance here, I'm seeing a lot of these things. Um, I think these are... Uh, I can't remember what these are used for. They're used in motors. Um, anyway, there's, there's a bunch of those down in here. That's not a carburetor. Uh, I'm not too savvy when it comes to engines, but there's a couple of those in here, as well as a lot of metal cans of all different sizes, some uh, aerosol cans of hot shot starting fluid. Those look to be kind of old, maybe from the 80s or 70s. But uh, there's a lot of cans in here, as well as a pack rat's nest. Well, there's nothing straight ahead, but it might go off to the to the left right there. Let me get down here a little bit further, but yeah, check out all these cans and bottles. Well, it looks like pack rats have plugged up what might have been a tunnel. I see a, a void back there right over the top of the debris pile. So that might have went a little further, but I'm not going to dig that out because that's a pack rat's nest. But this kind of slopes down a little bit and then stops right there. And uh, don't know why all these cans and bottles are in here, but they are. And here's looking back towards the entrance. The ceiling in here is black too, like they might have been if this was used as a camping spot, they might have been, had some fires in here, but you can see the soot kind of like right here. But uh, yeah, just thousands and thousands of rodent droppings right here in front of me all over the place. So major pack rat's nest. You can see you can see them everywhere. But yeah, these cans are interesting. Never, I've never seen a prospect full of cans. And I don't think the pack rats would have brought all these in. I think the miners did this deliberately. But I'm sure the pack rats love it. So let's go check out the other portal. So here is the other tunnel at this site, kind of down in this uh, little ravine. Um, looks like this kind of drops. Oh, there's a lizard right there. Check that out.
So you can sort of see the vein of quartz right there going across the top, right there next to the ceiling. But this whole area is just full of quartz, but that looks like one of the main veins right there where my light is, right at the top there where the ceiling meets that back wall. And then they dug down in here, and uh, but yeah, there's quartz right here, you know, uh, so it's everywhere, but looks like the tunnel goes off that way, and just a dead end right there to the right. And there's some old bed springs. So here's those bed springs up close. I once heard, someone told me that miners would use bed springs either to assist with dragging out the rocks, or sifting or something like that but honestly I think they just slept on this but this tunnel um, goes in there you can see a straight shot goes in about I don't know 25 feet 30 feet and uh, it's just a giant pack rat's nest I'm zooming into the end of it there there's a lot of pack rat debris in there so no need to go in there and check that out. But uh, yeah, out here in this in this foyer, you can see what I pointed out earlier, right up there near the ceiling, is the band of quartz, maybe, or at least one of them. Looks like a layer right there. But they just dug the whole thing out. A lot of quartz all through here, obviously. And over here behind me, that's just, those are all just dead ends. Those don't go anywhere. Okay, so here's a waste rock pile. Not a big one. And the portal to the mine is right here. Kind of dug into a small hill. So of these three portals I've explored so far, this one seems to be the one in the best shape and resembles most like a, a traditional mine. Uh, check out these uh, roots coming out of the ground there and going back into the ground right over there. So, yeah, this was uh, this erosion pile is really it's uh, it's going to plug this up one of these days. But we can still get in here. Um, the waste rock pile is behind me. Um, you saw what it looked like, so this won't be that extensive, but let's go check it out. Okay, so I'm sliding down the erosion pile. Now this this portal doesn't seem to be dug through any quartz. Um, not sure what this is. Uh, almost looks like slate or something, I don't know. But uh, I think I see the end up there. Um, it's a little colder in this one because it's got a little more depth than the other two did. And I uh, don't know if you can hear it in the video, but there's kind of like a, an echo. Um, which I'm assuming means this is really solid rock and very stable, but there are some small rocks on the floor which had to have come from somewhere, which is probably the ceiling. So. But yeah, I think there's a, a, it's just a straight shot here, like I said, 30 feet or so, 50 feet, and then a dead end. Okay, continuing forward here. Wouldn't this be nice if it was a T-intersection up here or something, but I don't think it's going to be a T-intersection. Can't quite stand up straight in this one, almost. So it's a, just a little under six feet tall. Um, well, maybe there's something off to the left here. I don't know. Nope, that's it. More pack rats, it looks like. But here's looking back. Can turn around here. So that mine portal we just were in is right there. I'm standing directly on top of the tunnel and it went in about 50 feet which would be right about to here where you see all this digging and you know, the tunnel stopped right about here underground and then this is just all dug out and there's another portal down in there somewhere going the opposite direction 
but I wonder, you know, this area where the mines are, there are all these trees. And uh, otherwise, we're in a barren desert. I wonder if the trees have anything to do with the mine or vice versa. I mean, I know trees need water, but I don't think water is necessary for a quartz mine to have gold, but maybe somehow the two are related. But very interesting. These mines were dug on a little hill where there's a lot of pine trees.